Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is showing you these Promax 317 big block Chevy heads and what I did to them because these are the ones that are going to go back on the 496 Dino Mule. So if you're new to my channel, this may this probably all comes as a surprise to you. But what I primarily do is I'm a cylinder head porter, but I also like to test different ideas on the dyno and mostly involve cylinder heads or intake manifolds. So on my channel, typically you see me dynamoing stuff um, to see what it does or different airflow stuff because, you know, like I said, I port heads for a living. So if you hadn't watched it, if you go back in time, we, a guy named Dominic, who has his own YouTube channel called DZ Performance, he brought a 496 uh, dyno mule to, for me to test and it's a hydraulic roller, a little small thing, like 240 something duration. And we had tested a whole bunch of different heads, these which were the Promax 317cc heads. We also tested their 290cc heads. We also tested the AFR 265cc head, the Brodix Race Right 270 oval ports, the Brodix Race Right 294 oval ports, and the AFR enforcers. So all those were dyno tested and a bunch of different manifolds. So after that was over, um, took these off and was like, I wonder, because these did really, really good, what would happen if I made them the same chamber size as the 290 Pro Maxes. Because these come with 119 cc chamber, but the 290s come with a 110 cc chamber. And when you compare the dyno numbers, this made actually a little bit more peak power, but everywhere else, the 290 was pretty much better. And I wanna know if it was because of the smaller port and velocity, or if it was due to the compression ratio and of the chamber. So two things have now happened and this being one, and I'll do a later video on the other one, but I'll go ahead and tell you. What I did with these 317s is I flat milled them. I didn't angle mill. I flat milled them down to 110 cc. So now they have the chamber, same chamber volume as the 290s. I also redid the valve job. And now you might say, why did you do that? Well, there was so much milled off, like 54 thousandths to get down to 110 cc's that it was actually getting into the actual seat itself um, um, where the valve job goes. So had to redo the valve job anyway, just had to happen. So because of that, I was like, well, I'll just put on a good one. I just want to see what it does. So I put it on a really good one. This is a 50 degree valve job. Standard is 45. 50 degree valve jobs typically flow better at the higher lifts and not so good at the lower lifts. It actually hurts compared to a 45. On the exhaust, I kept it exactly 45. I just re recut it because I was like, well, I'm cutting the intake, might as well cut the exhaust. And then I just blended it in. The only reason for blending is you had to drop it down quite a bit, quite a ways just to get the angles to come back in because of the milling. So, and um, I haven't CC'd them since, but the milling should have brought it to 110 cc's, but I'm betting if I did CC this, it's probably like 111, 112. Because by the time you do the blending and drop the valve to get it where it needs to be, it's, it's probably that way. So, uh, anyway, it's close to 110 cc's. It's really, really close. Um, two cc's isn't going to make a huge difference as far as power. But I refloated after. And this is the only thing, is, and by the way, what you see here, it looks like I poured it. I just blended the valve job in because there was a ridge that was left. You can see I just did it with a cartridge roll here and that's it. That, th there's nothing fancy. I promise no other port work. And so valve job, uh, which came in perfectly and just blending it. And here's what it did. So I floated on a 4310 bore. Here's what it did for flow. I got my pointer. This is the stock numbers for long runner. Because remember, big blocks have a long runner and they have a short runner the end of this cylinder the air does at a different angle so the short runner actually aims it right at the chamber wall while the long runner aims it right at the center so typically it flows better on the long runner and most people advertise or companies advertise the long runner i'm showing both so we have a long runner this is stock this is the short runner stock that's stock exhaust this is now modified so if we look i'm just going to go from here to here because that's long versus long and i'll just go with them so 77 to 70, and I really don't care one, so I'll just ignore that one. 200, 148 to 150, gain two CFM, so not bad. Uh, 300, 215 to a 217, almost 218, so gain a three. How about looking for 268 to a 260, I lost eight. It gets worse. 500 to 320 to a 309, lost 11. So those two spots really, ugh, but wait. Now it's time for it to really start charging hard. Went from at six, a 347 to a 354. So let's see, it's seven CFM gain. Still hasn't made up for those two though. But wait, now it went from a 358 
to a 386. That's like 18 CFM, pretty good gain. And then at eight, 351 to 370, 20 CFM gain. 352 to 367, 359 to 367. So it's really, like I said, it's really, really gaining a lot in the upper lifts. And I can already hear people just, I can't wait to comment. You're probably tapping away on your keyboard right now. Who cares what it flows at one inch valve lift or eight inch of valve lift? You only said you had like a 650 lift cam. What's the matter? We're going to find out. Because um, remember, the flow bench only flows 28 inches of vacuum. Now, that's a water. An actual engine moves more air than that, so the airspeeds are dramatically different. So, if it flows more at the peak, it's because there's higher airspeed things too. So, there's a little bit more to it than what these flow numbers show, but it just gives you a picture. And I'd rather have the, a video. So, that's why we're dynoing. It'd be interesting. Now, let's compare the short runner, though, while we're at it, because that one's a little different. Uh, it went from, we'll start with two, 147 to 153 gain. 215 to 210, lost five. 271 to 263, a huge loss. Look at five, 312 to 315. That's a gain. And then look, six, they tie, 348, 340. I shouldn't say 340.8, 340.1. And then look, this is seven, 343 to 350. That's what's gaining. And then, let's see, 340 to 352, pretty good gain there. And 350 to 361 and 364. So a pretty good gain in the upper lifts and losing a, quite a bit at four and five, um, at least in the long run. The short runner really just loses that four. So kind of a different scenario there. Now, at this point, you might think, well, it's because of the 50 degree valve job. You should have put a 45 on it. True. I did think about that. But like I said, I was more worried that the angles wouldn't come in because from the factory, it's kind of bigger here. So if you put a 45 on there, not all the angles would go in. So it, and my thought, I was like, it's going to make it um, not flow as well because not all the angles are in. The other thing is when you do a 45-degree valve job, probably more information you want to know, the top cut. So the angle 45 is what touches the valve and the seat, but the top cut's the one coming off of it. On a 50-degree valve job, we're steeper. So we're like at 40, maybe even 42 degrees on that, which means it's, it's stood up more, right? On a 45, we lay it down like 37 or even 30. So what that means, though, is because I had to drop the valve job down, if I had a 45-degree valve job in there, I'd have a top cut of a 37, and it would have really dug into the chamber. And what I mean by that is if I put a 45 in there to get it to, get it to sink in where it would clear all this um, so it would actually get the valve job in, I'd have a heck of a ridge through here. And what I'd end up doing was gaining more chamber volume because I'd have to remove more material here to get rid of that notch. So at that point, it would be even... It, you know, I might have milled off to be 110, but I might end up at 114 um, after doing all the stuff to get it to actually move what it should be. So hence, another reason for doing the 50 was taking less chamber volume to get it closer, at least to see if it's the CCs make a difference. But now also we have to deal with the difference in flow. Now, that's for, uh, 50 degree, but what about the exhaust? Because this is a weird one. This exhaust is 45 degrees. I didn't put it at 50 and it was 45 degrees before. Watch what this does. Same thing. It actually lost down low. So this may be something to do with the milling more than the actual seam angle. Because if you look, uh, this is worse at the beginning. I don't care. At 200, 130 to 128, lost two. Look at three, 195 to 172. That's a huge loss. And then four, 238 to 210. That's another big loss. Look at five, 256 to 246, 10 CFM loss. And look at six, 264 to 269. It's not till six that it starts gaining and then it gains all the way through and it's better. But that shouldn't have happened. That that is still a 45 degree valve job. So whatever angles and stuff there, and there was, as you could tell, I didn't do any grinding on the exhaust part. And the valve job came in perfectly. So whatever you see there, um, that has to be due to, I mean, due to milling. There's no other grinding done. It was just a valve job. So a bit interesting on that deal. The true test comes when we put this on the dyno and we see if this actually how the power curves and everything are different. And I know I'm already waiting for the comments on this one. Well, now we can't even compare because the chamber sizes are different uh, and the valve job's different. How are we going to know there's a compression or the valve job that did it? I totally understand you and hear that completely. But there was no way around of not doing a valve job. There's no way it would have sealed because the valve, I mean, let me point, get my pointer instead of my finger. See, that's the seat angle right there. Okay, picture that seat angle 
from here to here gone like it's gone it's because when the mill hit it it went all the way through it and then you're just in this is the undercut it wouldn't have sealed so it had to have a valve job there was just no, no possible way around it um but i want to see so now the video i was going to tell you what i end up doing is i've already modified the 290s now 290s already had a 110 cc chamber they now have a 2300 intake valve because this is a 2300 intake valve so both are going to have the same intake valve size I've actually done port work on the 290s, though, legit port work, not heavily, but I did something I wanted to try a little different that I can't wait to show you. And it does move more air, too, but it doesn't move this air. It ain't moving 386 CFM at 700 lift, tell you that. Um, but it's moving pretty good. So it may actually even be better than this in most points, except for peaks. So that'd be really interesting. Because I've actually floated already, but I'll bring it out and do a whole other video because I'm going to clutter up this one. But... I think it's better everywhere except for the probably from 600 on. And then it's close, but not there. So then we're going to get a real interesting one where we have a head that now flows. It's bigger, but flows less than the smaller one. Both have the same chamber size. So before any port work, this one outflowed the 290. So I don't know. We're going to, we'll talk about that in the other video when I get to that one. I don't want to make this one. Too weird but i thought i'd show you this before i get to assembling it and i want to show you something else i did too because i'm assembling it, i changed the valve spring pressures before when it ran it would go into valve flow at 6300 um it just did so it was really hard to say hey i wonder how much more power this thing made at like 65 6800 rpm because the engine would never get there it didn't matter what head was on it 6300 you're pretty much done because of valve flow um so we could see the curve underneath that and the cam's probably given up about that time anyway but you can't, so what I did this time when I'm assembling them, I've set them up with a stronger seat pressure and spring pressure, so now it looks like this. Now it's got 190 pounds on the seat. That's a 1890 installed height, 490 open. It says 670 lift, but because I can't remember what he has, I think it might be like 660 something. And then I give us 40, 50 thousandths to cool bind. Um, this will give us our best chance not to go into bow float because of the um, spring pressures anyway. So there's what's going on with that. Hopefully, in two weeks, we can be on the dyno and find out what this is going, what's going to happen. By the way, in case you're wondering what's going to be tested, um, this head, obviously, the 290 as well. We're going to try a couple different intakes on each one because if you're new to my channel, you might not know this, but whenever I test heads, I also test different manifolds to make sure it wasn't just that one manifold that was good for that one head, but not for another set. So we'll be testing some different manifolds on it too. I am ordered, I have ordered the new AFR dual plane intake manifold, which will work perfectly with that 290 Pro Max head because it's a roval intake and so is that. That'll be interesting to test that too. So anyway, hopefully in a couple weeks, you get to see some actual dyno results instead of just flow numbers and we'll see if any of these thoughts, theories go together. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman, which means I'm not perfect and I make plenty of mistakes. You guys take care. One more thing before I let you go. In the video you just watched, I talked about the dyno test with a big block Chevy. Well, you can go to my website, wengines.com. I'm gonna put that in the uh, description, link for that in the description. And you can actually purchase this book. This is the 496 Dyno Meal book. This is all the dyno tests from the previous session. So you can actually see how the Pro Max heads did in the previous one. Also, it has all the measurements. So let me flip through them. Uh, a couple pages like there's some and that's the measurements for the AFR and forces parts report stuff but then they have of course if I can get the page to turn flow numbers and then of course the thing you guys are most interested in dyno numbers so those are all there too um but anyway this book's available and the new one that's out this is book five so if you've been watching every Sunday so far probably the last four weeks you've been hearing the dyno session about um, small block Chevy stuff and all the with the tunnel ram and stuff and there's still more videos I'm gonna make of this because there's still more stuff that was tested that's in this book that I haven't done a video over and all that stuff's here I will warn you I just looked at it and saw this I misspoke compression and it somehow made it to print but anyway all the dyno stuff's in there like that I haven't even talked about yet that clover leaf being removed and then you've got the graphs as well so if you think those are cool, you can also sign up on my website, wengines.com, to become a channel member. Then you'll actually get those pictures that you see. You would have got them texted to you on the day I'm dynoing. And also, you get better videos, really, because I suck at editing, obviously. 
But anyway, go to the website and purchase the books. You can sign up to be a channel member, wangels.com. Again, thanks for watching. You guys, take care.